Hi everyone, I hope you're looking forward to a short week this week. Um, the last few weeks I've been sending home some videos um, on some strategies that you can use every day in your classroom activities, pencil grasp, scissor grasp, um, making adapted paper, spacing between your words, how to write on the line. So today I wanna to talk again about strengthening that grasp and working on your fine motor skills. So I found these clothespins at our local dollar store, some index cards, and a permanent marker. So to promote that grasp and to work on strengthening those muscles, we are going to be using a clothespin in some activities. And what we want to make sure is our students are grasping it correctly. So we want the index and middle finger on the top and the thumb on the bottom. If your student is having some problems with finger flaring, these last two fingers kind of doing their own thing, you can always use a coin in their palm to pull that in or maybe even a, a cotton ball or something, okay? Um, the other thing that I try to promote whenever I'm working on clothespin activities is I try not to have them go over top like this. So I try not to have them go like this and, and adhere them to the top of something. What happens there is the wrist is bent and it makes it much harder on the kiddos to be able to manipulate their fingers. It's much more natural for the wrist to be back, to be um, bending those fingers in the way that we're asking them to. So when I'm doing any kind of clothespin activities, I try to have them do it facing them and where their thumb would be facing the front. Okay, and some of the activities that I think you can already incorporate into is math. So if your students are working on any kind of multiplication, addition, subtraction facts, you would have them on the index cards. You would have a bunch of clothespins with numbers on them. And again, we would be promoting that grasp with the thumb in the front, two fingers in the back and they will just close pin the answer on there. And that's a great activity to set them up with, and then you can come back and check the answers later. Um, that is also works the same way if they're maybe working on some spelling words or maybe how to write their last name. You can have the close pin set up where they can match the letters with the letters on the cards. You can do it for matching activities say uh, maybe upper and lowercase letters. And you don't even need to write on the clothespins for something like that. You could just have them stack them together and then use the clothespin to put it on. You can have them even match colors and put them on. Now after a while that might get easy and a way to make that a little bit harder for some of our students is to use some rubber bands towards the end of the clothespin. And depending on how thick your rubber band is will depend on how hard you can make it. So this one's kind of a big rubber band, but it is very um, rubbery, I guess. And I can bend it pretty well. So you can just kind of arrange it towards the top there, and then your student would have to. I'm sorry, let me get that a little bit closer. You have to squeeze against some major resistance there. And if you have some smaller rubber bands, maybe like the rainbow loom kind, maybe you have a daughter who's doing rainbow loom, you could maybe stack them uh, along here, along the tip there to make it a little bit harder for your student as they um, get a little bit better. So you could even, if they're thinner rubber bands, you could put one at the bottom and maybe one on top. And so then you can change the resistance. If you have any questions on those activities, please feel free to text me, email me, call me, 